Okay, so let's look at an example of um, the Taylor method applied to a system of equations. So, Taylor method applied to a system of equations. Okay. So, uh, as you might expect, what you want to do is you want to apply a truncated Taylor expansion for each of the components of that system. So, you want to apply a truncated Taylor expansion for each uh, component. at yi, okay? So yi at the new time, t plus h, is approximately equal to yi at t plus h yi prime of t plus h squared over 2 yi double prime of t all the way up to h to the n over n factorial. Uh, the nth derivative of yi at t. And so uh, you can write this in vector form, right? In vector form, you have that y at t plus h is approximately y at t plus h y prime at t h squared over 2 y double prime at t all the way up to h to the n over n factorial n to the root of y at t. Okay? <coughs> so as you can see, it's like in vector form, it looks very, very similar to uh, the usual um, Taylor method, except that instead of little y, you have a big y, right? Instead of having y be a scalar, you now have y uh, being a vector, okay? So let's uh, maybe try to um, <clears throat> Look at this a little bit more explicitly with an example. Okay, so let's just have uh, x prime is equal to x plus y squared minus t cubed, uh, and y prime is equal to y plus x cubed plus cosine of t. Uh, and if your initial conditions x at 1 is equal to 3, and y at 1 is equal to 1. Okay. So, um, all right, so y, big Y at t, this vector is just going to be xy, right? And then y prime at t is just going to be uh, x prime y prime, which is just going to be um, <coughs> x plus y squared minus t cubed, right? Um, and then y plus x cubed plus cosine of t. Okay, I'm also going to call this uh, x1, y1. And then uh, y double prime of t is x double prime, y double prime, okay, which is of course x1 prime, y1 prime, and we're also going to call it x2, y2, okay. All right, then I can differentiate this, okay, so I have x, <coughs> so I get x prime there, right, so that's just x1, Okay, um, plus, okay, you have uh, y squared, so that's 2y, y prime, so that's plus 2y, y1, uh, minus 3t squared, okay, then y, the derivative of y is uh, y prime, so that's y1, plus 3x squared, uh, x1, minus sine of t, so I'm just differentiating that, okay, and then y triple prime of t is uh, 
uh, x2 prime, y2 prime, which I'm going to call x3 and y3. And I can write this again, right? So I have to differentiate the x prime, so the x double prime, that's x2 minus, um, so I have 2y, y prime, I can differentiate, I have to use the product rule, I can differentiate either the y or the y prime first. So let's say I differentiate the y prime, I get my, oh, sorry, plus 2y, y2. So this is uh, 2y, y double prime, right? Or I can differentiate the other piece, right? I get uh, plus 2y1 squared, right? If I differentiate 2y, y prime, uh, but I differentiate the y part, then I get 2y prime, y prime, right? So that's 2y1 squared, right? And then I differentiate the 3t squared, so that's 6t. And then this is uh, y prime, so it get different derivative of this gives me y double prime, which I call y2. Uh, and then this is uh, 3x squared uh, x prime. I can differentiate the uh, x first, right? Uh, x squared first, which gives me uh, 6 uh, x, uh, x1 squared, right? And I can differentiate this other piece, which gives me 3 x squared uh, x double prime, which is x2. And then I differentiate the sine to give me a cosine. Okay. All right. Um, so anyway, so, so that's uh, those components. Now I can put them all together uh, to give me a pseudocode for this method. Okay, so the input is uh, sort of the initial and final time A and B. <coughs> uh, the initial and final positions, uh, conditions alpha and beta, and the number of time steps N, okay? So um, I'm going to let T is equal to B, right? X is equal to A, or X equals alpha, sorry. Y is equal to beta. And then the time step H is equal to B minus A over N, okay? And then the output of this is going to be t, x, and y. So x is going to be x minus So it's going to be x plus h, right? x1 plus h over 2, x2 plus h over 3, x3. Okay. <coughs> and uh, the reason why I've written it in this way is because this is a very, very efficient way of evaluating a polynomial, right? Um, because what happens, of course, is that you have a polynomial that's like uh, in powers of h, okay? Um, so maybe let's <clears throat> try to expand this. It's like to see what exactly is going on here, right? Um, so let's do this as an aside, right? So you have x is, okay. Well, maybe let's uh, do the assignments this way. Okay, 
So if you look at this, what we've really done is that you have x plus h, x1 plus h over 2, x2 plus h over 3, x3. Okay, so let's expand things out, right? So this is x plus h, x1 plus h over 2, x2 plus h over 3, x3, right? And then this is equal to x plus h, x1 plus h over 2, x2 plus h squared over 6, x3, right? Which is equal to x plus h, x1 plus h squared over 2, x2 plus h cubed over 6, x3, right? So, um, so you can see that uh, that is exactly what you expect from the Taylor expansion where the x sub i corresponds to the i derivative of x, right? But, um, and, and I've obtained this here. Um, and, um, but you've saved um, a little bit of computational uh, effort because in principle, uh, you, you don't have to take these um, <coughs> sort of derivatives of, um, yeah, you don't have to worry about these derivatives. It's like here. Um, sorry, not derivatives, um, these powers of h, right? So um, it, it just sort of exploits the fact that h to the p plus 1 is equal to h to the p times h. Okay, so, so I've just uh, done this sort of factorization. It's like in this way. Um, and and that saves you on the fact that you have to do two multiplies or three multiplies here and then two and then one, right? Uh, so if you can you compute or you can check that this uh, requires uh, fewer multiplications, again, by exploiting the fact that <coughs> h to the p plus 1 is equal to h times uh, h to the p, okay? So anyway, so, so this, is, this is sort of, uh, again, a much more efficient way of evaluating uh, polynomials. Uh, and then you do something similar, it's like with y, right? y gets mapped to y plus h, uh, y1 plus h over 2 multiplied into y2 plus h over 3, y3, okay, and t gets mapped to um, <coughs> sort of a plus kh. Well, let me just write this as t gets mapped, uh, gets updated to t plus h. All right, so you have to have a for loop, right? Right, so you have 4 uh, k is equal to 1 to sort of n minus 1, if you will, and then you end the for loop. Okay, and then you output uh, t, x, and y. Okay, so that's, that's the basic idea behind this. All right. Um, Anyway, so uh, as, as, uh, as you can see, it's like um, <coughs> if we write it in this way, um, you, can, um, you, you, you can get the usual it's like application, it's like of Taylor's method, it's like now to this uh, system of equations. And in fact, it's like, again, if you're working with directly with this vector form of the equation, instead of writing this component-wise, you can really just write that big Y is equal to you know, it's like um, these things, it's like, but where um, you've written uh, everything as, uh, so you write this as, for example, y1, this is y2, this is y3, right? Then you can actually just replace this um, set of equations with a single vector equation for the update. Okay, so anyway, um, so hopefully that gives you an idea of uh, what's involved. It's like in extending some of the things which you've done. It's like for scalar ODEs, it's like the systems. Uh, of first order ODs. So as you can see, it's like the idea is very, very similar.